Okay, geometry fans, our topic for today, this is section 9-9, uh, which is actually not in our textbook, so I'm just making up a section here. Special segments in circles. And our objectives for today, after this lesson, students should be able to find the measures of segments in circles when chords intersect, and then find the measures of segments in circles when secants and tangents intersect. And we've already talked about some properties with chords, with secants and tangents, but uh, we're going to get into a few more here. So before we start, let me give you your joke of the day. Do you want to hear a joke about paper? Eh, never mind. It's terrible. Tear, T-E-A-R, a bull. Terrible. There you go. Okay, so the first, there, there are two relationships that we're going to look at. The first one is when you have two chords intersecting. So we've got segment AB, we've got segment CD, they intersect at this point E. Now, we don't know that E is the center. It could be, but we don't know that. And actually, if we're eyeballing, let's assume that E is not at the center. So what's gonna, gonna happen here is I'm going to label um, these pieces here. So AE and EB are parts, I'll call them part one and part two from the same chord. And then for CD, when it gets intersected, it creates part three and part four. Okay, now, if I connect A to C, and if I connect D to B, what we've done is we've just created two triangles. Okay, we have triangle AEC, we have triangle BED right here. Now we do know that in these triangles, vertical angles are congruent. So I can label that this one and this one are the same. Now another thing that will be true though, if I look at angle C, the vertex is on the circle, which means that the angle measure is half of the intercepted arc. So if I trace out angle ACE, it's going to be arc AD. Okay, now the thing about that, so if I trace this out, we intercept arc AD. But if I look at angle B here, and if I trace that out, it's going to intercept the same arc, AD. Now we don't know what the measure is, but we do know that whatever that is, if we take half of it, we get the measure of angle C, but we would also get the same thing for angle B. So what happens here is we have another pair of congruent angles. Now, going back to similarity, this was quite a while ago, but when you have triangles and two sets of corresponding angles are congruent, we can say triangle AEC is similar, not congruent. We don't know that they're congruent, but we can say that they are similar. AEC was no arc, one arc, two arcs. No arc is D, one arc is E, two arcs is B. So we know that those two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. Now, when triangles are similar, we know that the corresponding lengths have to be proportional. So if we take AE, that length, that corresponds to DE. So the ratio of AE to DE is equal to the ratio of, so here's AE and DE. Let's take CE, which is these two, over BE. That has to be true, that those two pairs of sides have to be proportional to each other. Okay, now we solve a proportion by cross-multiplying. So if we take AE times BE, so AE, times BE equals DE times CE. And actually I'll write CE times DE. Now the thing about this, okay, we don't have numbers for these, but AE and BE represent the two parts that get created by the first chord. So in other words, part one times part two equals, and then CE and DE CE is part three, and DE is part four. And what we get is a formula. 
This is our first formula. Part times part equals part times part. It doesn't matter the one, two, the three, four. It's the two parts from one chord, their product, multiply, is equal to the product of the two parts from the other chord. So this is actually a really easy formula to use. For example, number one, we want to find x. x is this part here. So we'll do part times part. That would be x and 4. So we can say x times 4, which is really just 4x, equals the two parts from the other chord are 5 and 8. So 5 times 8, which is 40. And now you have an equation. We solve it by dividing by 4, and we get x is equal to 10. That's it. Part times part equals part times part when two chords intersect. That's what the rule is. Okay, now number two, there's a little more information. AE is 12. Well, let's label that. AC, the whole thing, the whole chord is 20. Well, if this piece is 12, subtract it from the whole thing, EC is 8. I know that it doesn't look accurate, but that's okay. We're not going by the looks. DE is 16. Find BD. Find the length of BD, which is the whole chord. Now, I know that I'm looking for the whole length, but I'm going to call this X. I'm going to label the part EB as X because I want to do part times part equals part times part. Again, it doesn't matter which chord you start with. I usually like to put the X on the left side. So I'm going to start with chord DB, part times part, so the 16X equals part times part, 12 times 8, which is 96. Well, divide by 16, X is 6. Now before you say that we're done, remember that we wanted to find the length of BD. BD is this whole thing, so let's take the 6, plug it back into the picture, and to get the whole thing, we add up the segments, we add the parts, 16 plus 8, and we get BD is equal to, uh, 16 plus 6, excuse me, 16 plus 6, and we get 22. And that's it. Okay, so when two chords intersect, part times part equals part times part. Not bad. All right, now the second situation is what happens when we have secants and tangents that are intersecting. Now to show you where the formula is coming from, I've drawn two secants, AC, AE. Remember that secants intersect a circle in two places here. Tangents only intersect in one. We'll get to the tangent situation in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to do this in a similar way to the first one. I'm going to create two triangles. Well, I will connect, we'll make a small triangle, we'll connect B to D. We'll actually draw a small chord right there. So what we have is triangle ABD, and then we'll also use the big triangle AC, and we'll connect that, oh, almost, we'll connect that to E. Now this one, like I said, is going to be a little bit more in depth couple things that we know, first of all. We can say that this quadrilateral, whatever it is, it's inscribed in the circle. Well, when a quadrilateral is inscribed in the circle, we know that opposite angles have to be supplementary. Okay, so these two angles here add up to 180. All right, whatever those are, those add up to 180 degrees. But, if we look at angle CBD with one arc, and then there's an angle next to it, angle ABD, well, that forms a straight line. That makes a linear pair. That also is supplementary. That must add up to 180. And so whatever this is, the supplement would be the same as this angle. So what happens is that, is that these two angles have to be congruent. Okay, so let me, I'll label them in red here. So two arcs. And then this I'll put in blue, two arcs. So we have one pair of congruent angles in the two triangles. But notice that both triangles also have angle A. 
The small one has angle A, and the big one has the same angle A. And what this gives us is another situation of angle-angle similarity, because the two triangles, if they have two pairs of corresponding angles congruent, the triangles must be similar. Okay, so again, we can write this down. We can say triangle ABD, that's the small one, is similar to triangle A corresponds to itself. Now this angle B corresponds to E, and then angle D, the missing angle, corresponds to the missing angle C. What that means, if the triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity, then that tells us that the sides must be proportional. AB matches up to AE. Their ratio must be equal to the ratio of, we'll go AD to AC. Okay, now again, let's cross multiply here, and what we get is AB times AC equals AE, and actually I'll, I'll write it as AD, I'll write it first, you'll see why, in a second times AE. Now, let's kind of look at this picture here and see what we're actually looking at. AB, AC. Here's AB. AC is the whole secant. AB is the outside part. Okay, so I'm gonna label this, that's outside part, that's just this length here, and then AC is the whole thing. AC is the length, the total length of the secant. Okay, that's the whole secant. Okay, that's equal to AD, which is the outside part, times AE, which again is the whole secant. All right, now the way that I write this formula, the way that I remember this is I say we take the outside part times the whole, and that's equal to the outside part times the whole. And that is formula number two. Oops. Outside part times the whole equals outside part times the whole. Okay, again, the idea, it's the product, it's multiplication. Outside part times the whole equals outside part times the whole. If you want to abbreviate it, if you want to say like OP you know, times W equals OP times W, you know, however you want to remember it. But that's a lot easier to memorize than trying to use the points, trying to use the segments themselves. This is how I like to describe it. Okay, so as an example, let's go ahead and flip it over. And we'll start here with number three, and it says find x. Okay, so x is the chord, it's the inside part of this secant. The inside part is not going to be used. The formula is the outside part times the whole, I'll abbreviate, equals the outside part times the whole. Okay, so in the top secant, three is your outside part. Now the whole thing it's not 3x, it's 3 plus x. We add the parts to get the whole thing. Now in the bottom secant, the outside part is 4. The whole thing is 4 plus 5. If you want to put plus signs here, you can, which is 9. So now we make the equation. Outside part, 3, times the whole thing, which is 3 plus x equals outside part, 4, times the whole thing, which is 9, times the whole secant. There's the equation. So it's really important that you, that you label what you know. Outside part, outside part, if you want to label this the whole, this is the whole. Okay, that's what you need for the formula. Now to solve it, we'll distribute. 3 times 3, we get 9 plus 3x equals 36. We'll go minus 9, we'll move that constant, and we get 3x equals 27. Divide by 3, x is equal to 9. And at this point, that's all they ask for, so we're done. 
So there's, there's more going on. This formula is a little bit more complicated, but that's an example.